Hallelujah. Got your Bibles? I'm going to give you two places to go. 1 Kings chapter 3, and then directly it will be at Luke 7. So you'll start at 1 Kings chapter 3, and then we'll be at Luke chapter 7. Again, we understand today is Mother's Day. We thank God for our mothers. I've often said it's the easiest and the hardest day to preach. With a lot of mothers, there's a lot of emotion to this day. God, I don't care what the world tries to do to flip genders. God made woman, the womb man, literally is what she's called, as an emotional uh, being. She's far more emotional than most of you men. Matter of fact, when I see a man get too emotional, I'm a little bothered with him. And I, and I, I believe in emotion. I mean, I cry. I've cried this week. I, I, I hug. I'm, I'm a toucher. You know, I'm going to get around folk and punch them. And, uh, and then on the flip side, though, God made moms a little bit more tender, look kinder. Now, she might chase you with a flip-flop. <laughs> My mama, she, she never even had to have to practice, but she'd take flip-flop across the room at you. You understood she had another one if you didn't straighten up. <laughs> Amen. Moms, moms are powerful. I've often said her, her kiss is stronger than Formula 409. You know, she can take care of Bobos, and she understands you when perhaps dad wouldn't pay you no attention. My mama was special. She's so special to me. She's probably watching this morning. She will be at either one of the services. She's that way. I've often said I was the favorite of the three that she had because she would put up potato chips in the cabinet for me and hide them so that the other siblings didn't know about it. Now, I don't know and through life and have never asked what she did for them that was more maybe favorable <laughs> to me, but to me, them potato chips meant something, and it started something in my life that has been hard to break even at age 60. <laughs> you know, you have to just quit buying them potato chips because I'm going to eat them late at night. It's just one of them things. Matter of fact, that guys that stopped by the house just bring me a bag of potato chips. And so I guess they figure that's my love language. Amen. A daughter asked her mother one time, she said, what made you want to marry daddy? The mother said, so you're beginning to wonder also. <laughs> From Genesis, a woman is seen as being a bearer of children. God created her that way. Eve, her name literally means mother of life, mother of mankind. And there's something about a mom. And every Mother's Day, I get looking for mothers in Scripture. And it seemed like this, this is a repeated, repeated principle in a mother's life. Uh, to the women in my life, my daughters, my wife, my mother, I've often said that crying ain't fair. Y'all hear me? Crying ain't fair. Once I see the tears, I give in. I just quit. I don't know. And there's times I've asked, why are you crying? And I've heard them say, I don't know. <laughs> and now at age 60, I understand, they don't know. <laughs> they just cry. Amen. And that, that's okay. But, sir, you're going to drive yourself nuts if you try to figure it out all the time why she's crying. Because it'll, it'll, it'll just make you crazy. Are you comfortable? Second King, I'm sorry, First Kings chapter 3. I want to uh, say this to you. The Bible does not sidetrack calamities, pains, hurts. It just lays it right out. And a lot of times we, we want to sugarcoat things, and, and that's why the Bible is so important in your life. It brings you back to reality. In this passage, and I'm not going to preach on it, I'm just going to use it as a jumping point. But in this passage, there are two prostitutes who have two babies, and they're actually living together. And one of them rolls over on her baby, and the baby dies. In the night, she takes, I'm, I'm telling some of y'all a story y'all never heard. Amen. Some of you never got there. You just passed right over. Wednesday night, I told a story about uh, uh, Elisha. I think it's Elisha, who was walking up the road, and he and some boys come out and started talking to him and calling him bald head. They said, go up, old baldy, go up. 
And that man, that preacher called a bear, two bears out of the woods, and it mauled 42 boys. Did you know that's in the Bible? I mean, I was reading that, and I thought to myself, if that happened today, if I was able to pull a bear out of the woods, to get onto the kids on Baptist Encampment Road to keep flipping me off every time I drive by, I wonder what them parents would think about me, Reese. I wonder what they'd say. That preacher down there that called the bears out the woods. Amen. I'd be on ABC, CBS, and I'd be in jail too, huh? <laughs> Amen. If somebody has the prophetic to do that. But I thought, that's an amazing story. And then I'm reading this story. It says, uh, 1 Kings 3, 24. Then the king, this is Solomon, said, bring me a sword. Because the, the women came in, and now, now they've got to make a, a law here. Because the one mother whose baby had died, she, she went and took the live baby and stuck the dead baby into the other mother. Amen. So now she got the live baby. Now, what mama don't know that ain't her baby? Come on. So they come in before the king, and the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order, cut the living child in two. And give half to the one and half to the other. The woman whose son was alive was filled with compassion for her son and said to the king, Please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. Then the king gave his ruling, Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is his mother. When all Israel heard the verdict the king had given, they held the king in awe because they saw that he had wisdom from God to administer justice. When I read that story, it hit me how one mother would be willing to give up a child because she loved that child. Amen. She cared. I'm, I'm the father of three adopted children. You know that. And so I, I understand the love of a mother to do this thing. But the other mother was selfish, would hold on and lie about it. But this mother would give this child up. The issue was that when Solomon saw the compassion, I believe the tears, the crying of the mother, who's, that was really her child, it affected him. Amen. Now we move into the book of Luke chapter 7. I'm going to leave you standing just for a minute. I will stand longer than you, so please don't worry. Luke 7, 11. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called, so now we're going to flip over and understand and, and watch this thing move into the New Testament. A town called Nain. Nain actually meant green pastures, a lovely place. And his disciples and a large crowd went along with him, and he approached the town gate. A dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother. She was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Why? Crying ain't fair. Amen. I'm telling you, it was tears that got his attention. When he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still, he said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe, praising God. A great prophet has appeared among us. They said, God has come to help his people. God has come, say it with me, God has come to help his people. One more time, God has come to help his people. I'll give you one word for that whole statement, Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. With us is God. Amen. He's come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you for every, everyone in the house. I thank you for those that are watching. I pray your blessing upon them. God, that you just pour it out and come and help your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Everybody say, preach quick, preacher. That's right. That's right. I got 10 minutes. Who will give me 10? Who will give me 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? Amen. Look like man going to be late for the second service, huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. I, lo I love this passage. God has come to help his people. It was a place where two large crowds met. Jesus is leading one crowd, and another, uh, another crowd is coming out carrying this young boy with his mother. Amen. Moving along, they're carrying literally death, if you would. It's the death of a dream. She surely had a dream with him. It's the death of friendship. She no longer had that connection there. It's the death of failed yesterdays. Amen. A hole has been dug. A box has been built. The inevitability of life. Life. Yesterday I did a memorial service and while I was there it, it reminded me so much so that what we do here will matter there that our voices need to resound even after we're gone but make this understood I have preached many of the funerals and memorials of people that you know and I will continue to do that until I'm gone 
And when you understand that, you know that death has a finality to it until Jesus gets involved. Amen. And so that's what happened here. Ecclesiastes tells us there's a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven. Amen. There's a time to be born. There's a time to pass. There's an exit sign. Amen. In your life and around your life. And this large crowd showed up. But along with the large crowd came large compassion. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her. And he said, don't cry. Those tears moved him, man. I'm saying, I've said this for years. If you want something to happen, get mama praying. If you want something to happen, get grandmama praying. Amen. I go to some of the guys. Every now and the guys say, I'm praying for you, Pastor. I say, yeah, but get your wife. Amen. I promise you, she can reach heaven quicker than you can. Hallelujah. Prayer is more than words. It's an attitude. It's emotion. It is desire. It's deep inner desire. It's reaching to God with mind, body, and soul. And he was moved with compassion. Compassion is love and action. Amen. It's a heart in motion. He said to her, don't cry. Amen. Her tears grabbed hold of him. Romans chapter 8, 26. Amen. It says to us in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know uh, that we do not know that we ought to. Uh, pray for but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will I'm telling you that that Holy Spirit inside of you there are times that you'll pray words won't leave your mouth and you can say well pastor that's speaking in tongues it may be but it may just be you moaning it may be just be you crying it may just be you wailing. It's okay. God hears your heart. I see this over and over in Scripture that God knows the hearts of his people, and he understands and connects with them. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 17. And, it, and this fascinates me that Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. I mentioned to you that men didn't, don't cry as much as, as women. And I don't mean that as a, that's just who we are. But Jeremiah was a prophet that cried. And one of the reasons why he cried was through his whole ministry, he never had a convert. Do you know over the last week we've already seen people born again in this church? Amen. Amen. In the last seven days we've seen that. This man went through his whole life, never had a convert. Never had anyone turn, but he was warning people. In Jeremiah 9, uh, 17, he says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Consider now, call for the wailing women to come. Send for the most skillful of them. Let them come quickly and well over us till our eyes overflow with tears and water streams from our eyelids. Bring those women in, because I'm telling you, they will change things. And then Jesus showed up and he touched the coffin. And this is what many of us, we, we are timid believers. We really are. We, we, we hope it's going to work. We pray as if we believe it, but Jesus walked with such authority. Amen. When he spoke, water would firm up under his feet. When he touched lepers, amen, skin began to grow back upon them. When he spit in the eyes of a man, pupils began to come back. He walked with authority, spoke with authority. And when he went up and he touched the coffin, amen, he, he grabbed hold of it. Amen. Those carrying it stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. Amen. Rise. Get up once uh, the King James says to work to rise the word means to awaken from inactivity ruins from obscurity and I say to you there are times that we need to look at our sons and daughters and say rise get up amen you're, you're acting like you're dead man you got a life ahead of you you got something good to go on so get up and get dreaming again can I get an amen amen he sat up the Bible says he began to talk that hit me <laughs> Sat up and began to talk. I wonder what he's talking about. I wonder if he stood up and said, I saw a white tunnel and a light coming toward me. Or I saw Grandpa. Amen. I, oh, I saw. He just stood up and he started to speak. He broke the silence. There's nothing. In the, the guys would tell you that I believe that silence is threatening. When you came into church today, was there music playing? Probably was in the background. You didn't even pick up on it. Because when it gets too quiet, It's threatening. When I go into a restaurant, there's always some music playing. Amen. And a lot of the Mexican restaurants I go into, the music's real fast, so you eat quick and get out. Yeah. You go in them Italian restaurants, and you know, you got that. I don't even want to go there with the music, but I ate at a place last night, and the music was nice and subtle, and it took me an hour to get out of there. Amen. He just kept on moving. He sat up and began to talk. Amen. Now, a lot of times, I will speak about a dream that I just had. I'll go into the office. I'll tell the guys about some really weird dreams. Amen. I'll have them. And my dreams are always in color. And, and, and I, I meet people. And there are times I meet people that 
from way back in the day. They just pop into your dreams. Amen. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. A dream, my friend, I believe is a God-inspired hope and expectation planted in the heart and made real in your imagination. Amen. The dreams are important. And then Jesus commended. I told you I can do it quick. Come on up here, Joseph. Amen. He commended. It's going to be a long closing. Take your time. <laughs> he commended. Verse 15. And Jesus gave him back to his. Read that. And Jesus gave him back to his. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. When I read that. To give back something means. If, if this belonged to David. And he gave it to me. And I gave it back to him. It means that while it's in my possession. 99% of the law. Is possession. As long as I have it, it's mine. So when Jesus raised him from the dead, he's saying something. This boy was mine. This boy's always been mine. Amen. And I'm going to give him back to you. In other words, he's my possession, but he's your privilege. Amen. I do that with my kids. My kids have been in auto accidents. They've, they've been rushed to the hospital. I've had things happen to them. I, I mentioned uh, last week my grandson tried to catch a fly ball. He's nine years old. He's working with some high school kids that were hitting shag shagging balls, they call it. He got lit up. He missed it with his glove. Hit him right on the nose. You know what I did? I gave him to Jesus. I have to. He's 800 miles away. Paul Paul can't help you right now. Amen. But to give your kids over to Christ and say, God, my grandkids and my kids are yours. They're my privilege, though. Amen. I'm privileged to have them. Oh, years ago, my, speaking of my grandson, he came from my daughter. That's usually how you get grandkids. And, uh, uh, that, and flesh and blood did not reveal that to me, but my father, which is in heaven. My daughter we had adopted her and she she's 16 months old and we got the word that the adoption was void and we had to go find her birth mother somewhere in the United States and uh, I remember the the turmoil the fight that was going on in me because I put my fist down in front of a lawyer and I said that little girl's mine and he pointed his finger at me and he said no sir she's not Oh, I got ticked. And he said, sir, your daughter is your privilege, not your possession. Oh, I hate when lawyers are right. He was right. And I, so I said, God, she's yours. And then when we found the birth mother outside of Kansas, she signed the papers over gladly. My daughter later in life, when she hit 18, 19, 20, she found her birth family. When she did, and I don't mean this in any mean way, but she called me and she said, Daddy, I want to thank you for being my daddy, for raising me. You know, it doesn't always, you know, you know how it's going to go. But when I, you understand they are privileged. And this woman, her son, her dreams, her friendship, everything about is gone. And he's laid in that coffin. And Jesus just comes by and puts his hand on it. It says to the boy, rise up, rise up. Psalm 126, those who sow in tears, verse 5, will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying the sheaves with him. Now, if you're not brought up in the country, and I, I, I remember going into some of them, Pleasant Hill Baptist churches and stuff like that and they'd sing bringing in the sheaves remember that song well I didn't know what a sheave was that's old school talk but it has to do with corn wheat fruit produce and so when I read the scripture it says those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy those who goes out weeping carrying seed to sow amen seed to sow in, in life you always have an opportunity to sow seed or to eat the seed and if you eat the seed you have no future that's why God commended all the way from the beginning to make sure you sow your time your talent your tithe your finances your treasures into the lives of people into the house of God to sow and I've always said this that if God can get it through you 
he get it to you. A lot of times we get hung up on that and we think what's mine is mine. And the truth of the matter is that I've never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer. That when you dead and gone, you dead and gone. And everything you got here is going to be fought over unless you learn how to release it earlier. So here, the scripture says, he who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy. Do you know the problem with that statement is the duration of time? Because it's going to take some time when you put the seed in the ground for it to bring forth fruit. Now, my kids, when I look at my kids, my kids are seed that have been sown. That little Delilah, the seed that's been sown. Amen. You, and, and it's going to take some time. But here's my hope. That this preacher will stand one day with songs of joy, shouting unto the Lord, look what God has done. Amen. I've sold tears into their lives. I've cried over their bassinets. I've cried over their beds. I've put my hands on their head and I've wept over them. I've done it to my grandkids. Oh God, my heart is breaking. I can't believe this is happening in my life. But one day, I'll stand and I'll sing songs of joy. And it will come back with sheaves. In other words, fruit is going to come back in. Amen. So I say to you, don't eat your seed. Don't, don't get mad at them. Don't get upset. Cast them away. But believe God for them. Can I get an amen? And I'll say this to you. You say, Pastor, what if, what if I'm, I pass? And I'm, even if you are, are passed from this life, God will still fulfill his promises. Amen. He'll take care of stuff for you. Hallelujah. The weeping was a result of a lack of seed. I only have a little bit. Amen. But the rejoicing was over much harvest. You know as I do, I, I've used to, I've worked with gardeners. I, one of my first jobs was working with a gardener. Amen. Second job. But, but putting corn into the ground and then watching it come up as a stalk and it would have three or four ears on that stalk and it would be loaded with corn. But it was only took a couple of seeds there. That's why I remind myself, it's not always the, uh, you know, when I sow something, it may seem like a saw, small thing that I sowed. But who knows what it's going to come back. Yesterday, I did a memorial service of a man named Big D. This man spoke into the life of a school teacher. A school teacher in, I think it was Huntington, Texas. And so he was uh, there in school, and the man spoke to him, and he said, whatever you do, make the difference in one person's life. Just take one person. So I say to you, make the difference in one person's life. I'm not talking about just your children right now, but find somebody and make the difference. There are kids in this house begging for somebody to make a difference in their life. So he took that as a command, went back and took one child and started putting it into that child. And he would call. So what they did is they looked at how many kids they had in school, 500 kids. Who's playing football? Who's in band? Who's in academics? And they pushed all them aside and they took all the what? Misfits. All the kids that weren't involved in anything. Said 150 kids and they called them Big D's Kids. And they started calling them, greeting them, inviting them out to eat, doing things with them. And he said, to this day, they're still known as Big D's kids. And their lives have changed. Testimonies have come in. Now watch this. This man who I did his funeral for yesterday had never met any of those kids. All he did was tell one school teacher, make a difference in somebody's life. And he went and done that. That's sowing, my friend. That's sowing into people's lives. And to see a change coming. Mama. I want you to know what you've sown in tears is going to return with joy. Amen. And when it does, it's going to bless your heart. Hallelujah. You've got to hang on and keep believing for that. Can I get an amen? Amen. Keep praying. Keep crying. Keep wailing if you need to. Keep throwing them flip-flops. Hallelujah. And keep sowing tears. Heads bowed, eyes closed around the house. I don't know everybody in this building. I sure don't know the people that are watching online. So it's important for me to say to you, that if you don't know Christ, you're sowing your life in vain. I don't mean that mean. I'm just telling you, you're sowing your life in vain. You haven't found your purpose, the reason why God created you. I'm talking about the one that walked on water, raised the dead, cleansed the leper, gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, tongues to the mute. That one, he changes lives. If you've been away from God or backslid, put your hand up and back down real fast, please. So I can pray for you. Thank you. Back down. Thank you. Amen. Anyone else real quick? Thank you. Three, four hands. Five hands. 
Amen. Let's pray this together. Lord Jesus, we are family, brothers and sisters, under the same Father. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash over me. Cleanse me. Make me the man or the woman that you want me to be. Give me purpose. Set my chin. Set my chin straight forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise in this house. Come on, you just witnessed a miracle. I finished preaching in 10 minutes. I gladly give my time to JJ. Amen. To watch that. Young, oh, she's been excited all week and nervous. I don't know, Pastor Paul Paul. I don't know. You're going to do fine, kid. Hallelujah. Amen. In front of you is a tithe and offer an envelope to put seed in. Yeah, that's right. It's a seed. Do you know why? I remember this now as a kid. My dad would plant a garden, and we'd have to till it, till it, till it. I was saying back to back. I've never, I've never been the guy that's going to have a pretty garden. I'm not going to have pretty flowers around the house. As a matter of fact, let me tell you, that freeze came and, and, and froze some of the trees in front of my house, and I threw my hands toward Jesus and gave him thanks. Amen. I, I didn't worry about any. I've just never been that person. I know some of you are all into flowers. So I, I'm not. Because I was a kid, I'd have to till in fields, and then I'd have to go in, and I'd get that little, it's a little packet. Just a little packet. Right, Ken? Just a little packet. And I'd take that little packet, and I'd drop him seeds in, and I'd, I'd take my foot and kick it over, and drop the seed in and kick it over. It's just a little packet. Hand me a tithe envelope. Amen. It's a little packet. Look, look kind of like this right here. Yeah, yeah, a little packet. Look just like that right there. It had seed in it. And I'd go through there, and I'd put that down. Did you know that there was seed in this right here that put carpet in this building? It was seed down here to put paint on these walls and seal text on the ceiling and this woodwork. It was seed in here that built that sound booth, seed in here to put that new flooring in the back, seed in here that takes care of missionaries and salaries, seed in here to take care of insurance. All it takes is seed. So everybody get a seed envelope. Amen. And put some seed in. Now, if you, if you give it online, wave your phone at the servant leaders that are coming by. I know some of y'all, you know, almost half our church now are giving online. I used to fight against this. I was so stupid. <laughs> H, y'all get y'all ready? Where's my guys with the buckets? Amen. We're gonna pass the buckets this morning. Amen. Getting back to some sense of normality. Everybody got an envelope that needs one. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. As we give today, we're believing God for more money, benefits. Come on. Finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Miss Linda Ken, would y'all? Amen. You, you could stay. I'll tell you what. Um, just sit down. What I need, what I, what I really need is for the mamas to stand up. Twenty-something years ago, I started this little thing that we do, and that's give mamas a rose. So I think it's very important, mamas, that all the mamas get a rose in the house. Amen? And to remind you that what you've sold is going to bloom. What you've sold is going to bloom. For years, I've said, you give a woman a seed, she'll give you whatever you give her. You give her a seed, she'll give you a child. You give her a seed, she'll give you a job. I mean, you give her a seed of meanness, she'll give you. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, you give her. Amen. she give back. So, mamas, if y'all could come out and come up and get your rose. We just want to honor you this morning. Amen. A little, little something in the background. Thank you so much.
There's a lot of mamas in the house today. All right, please. Dee, would you help her, please? Over here, help Ken.